The grandeur of this peak. afternoon from Wendy Abraham Link. In the summer of 2023, I set out to recreate a shot I dubbed the Mountaineer Cowboy, the coolest photo I've ever seen in the mountains. This mission was one of many I've been tackling in Banff National Park, among the Canadian Rockies. I'm at the Saskatchewan Crossing. Got the solar panel out on the road. It's only provided about 20 watts. The Mountaineer Cowboy is a shot taken somewhere pointed towards Saskatchewan Glacier near Athabasca Peak. This is on the opposite side of the very popular Athabasca Glacier. Yellow and blue markers are the glacier shots I need to take. With nothing more than a few dots I'd put on my map as a general indication where I should try to stop and bushwhack to find this location, I set out on my adventure. I just pulled over real quick because check this out. Look at this. Wow, what a beautiful place. Got to the Sunset Pass trailhead. <laughs> Guys, you gotta come stand here and do exactly this. No one, there's no one here. Like, th the grandeur of this peak. This is amazing, I'm, I'm happy with this. Throughout the national park, it's always like that. There's gonna be someone who's driving the speed limit and then everyone else just plugs up behind them. I found that uh, paw marks there, something heavy was pushing down on there. Probably a bear. There she be, fresh glacial water. Look at the sun just barely kissing the top of this thing here. It's important when I'm on these missions to stop and smell the flowers. This area is one of the most beautiful I'd ever come across in my entire life, especially right off the side of the road. I just made myself some mac and cheese with beets, green peas, onion flakes, garlic, salt, pepper, and cumin. Mm. You can't go wrong with green peas and mac and cheese. The next day I continued down the road where I'd stop at the Weeping Wall, a waterfall that is coming out of the side of the mountain. So we've made it to the Weeping Wall, which I'm going to assume it's this right here, this business. So that guy there, Larry, He's biking from Edmonton down to Canmore and Calgary and back up to Edmonton, 1,200 kilometers. This is some very fast moving water. So I just found this little trail here at the Weeping Wall. This is a legit steep trail. Ooh. This is pretty darn cool. Wow. So I'm on the side of the road here of the Saskatchewan Glacier. Now I'm gonna to try to recreate this shot. It's, a, it's one heck of an image. Now I can't figure out exactly, I put a, a rough marker. The marker I put is right up here. Now there's no opening in these trees. So either these trees grew in, or maybe the guy was, you know, the, or the two guys, the one guy in the photo you can see, is sitting way up there on that edge. I'm not sure. Um, it could be up over here. There's a little bit of a bluff um, up here in the woods, which I'm gonna go try to bushwhack up to right now and see if we can get this shot. There's a creek right here and there's a bit of a, a bluff right up there. I don't know, let's just go bang around in grizzly bear uh, country and see what happens here. You can definitely hike in this forest. There's some bushwhacking for sure, but just giant spider webs everywhere. 
Ugh, it's painful. The bluff should be right this way. An absolute mess in here. Look at this. It's getting more open here. You can see I'm standing on something. So I'm realizing that this is not the spot the old timers were at. It looks like they're much higher and they're on that far, the kind of far side over there. I'm gonna follow the river down all the way out. Some people go to the spa to get their body all scraped and scrubbed. I personally just walk through juniper bushes. Look at this waterfall. For some reason, I thought this was a man in orange standing here. So I just got across a bridge construction down there. You can see way back down the road there, that's where I was. I pointed out I thought it was this ridge where the those two old timers were taking the photo. I think it's up on this Parker. I think it's Parker Ridge. I think it's up here. But I think there's a legitimate trail on the other side. I'm gonna check this out. On the far side of the horseshoe is a pullout to Panther Falls. Armed with my super slow motion camera and a 600 millimeter lens, I got some fantastic shots of this waterfall in the far distance. So that's uh, Panther Falls over there, pretty cool. Wow. I'm at the uh, Parker Ridge here. It's a pretty, uh, pretty busy place. I'm about, I think, halfway up right now. I'm not sure where this trail is taking me. There's a you know, the bigger peak is up there. This trail, two things. One, wow. Two, it's a slog. <laughs> So there's a bit of a fork in the road, the, uh, the summit's up there. But I'm gonna go follow these yellow triangles over here first. So apparently this trail goes out to get a good look at the uh, Saskatchewan gl gl Glacier. That's the one that the old timers were in front of. So I gotta think that they were sitting on this one. That other peak is too far to the right. After cresting the ridge, I was now on the right side to find where the Mountaineer Cowboy was positioned. We can see the glacier enough to match up the shot as best as possible, but I really want to see what this looks like without the smoke. It's only a matter of figuring out how far back he was in relation to Saskatchewan Glacier. It's so windy up here. The Saskatchewan Glacier. This is unexpected. I didn't, I was just planning to go to the top of that, that peak over there. Following the yellow triangles, I didn't expect to see a cliff edge walk trail, which caught me off guard a bit. Yeah, on the side of this incredibly steep stuff, your nerves are kind of like a, a muscle. When you, you work them, they get stronger over time, but they also are get sore, that's what I find. And because of all the stuff at Farrell Peak, I'm looking at this little tiny skinny track and I'm just, I did half of it and came back. I was like, I'm not feeling it today. I think it's just cause there's like gale force winds up here. It just makes it feel so much more unstable. We're gonna go to the top of that peak right up there. That's probably where those old timey mountaineers were at. This peak is 
way higher than the one over there. I don't know if any of these have names. It's up here somewhere. There it is. Is it windy up here? <laughs> Jeez. You think with all this wind it'd blow the smoke out of here? The first location I checked at the summit wasn't it. I didn't even set up my tripod to try to match it because I knew it wasn't right. It's a bit of a risky situation with the gale force winds, leaving my camera unattended. I'm trying to find the ledge that the old timer was sitting on. But I'm getting rocked by wind. Some of the strongest wind I've ever experienced on a mountain. I'm gonna go to the edge here because I think they went to the edge. It's possible they could be at the far end. I don't know, it's hard to match this up. So the glacier's over there. Follow the river this way. It's a little bump there, so I'm wondering if they were taking it there, but I don't see any rock that this guy would be sitting on. Look like he's sitting on one of these. Okay, so I have a suspicion that the photo was taken just about 80 meters ahead of me down a little bit, because there's a sloping upward rock on the left side. So I think it's right there ahead of me, I'm just hoping there's not a cliff here. With no cliff in sight, I head down to the spot where I think the Mountaineer Cowboy is perched. So something wasn't making sense. The bends in the river and the glacier shape wasn't right. And then I realized these old timey photos are flipped horizontal. So once I flipped it, boom. And I think I'm in the right spot here. It's either this one or the one above me. The thing is, I don't know if the rock that that guy's leaning on is exists anymore. Or if it's, you know, did it crumble and fall to the bottom? So I thought the spot was there because the image is flipped, but it's not. The mountains didn't match up. So the archive probably flipped the image, which means it's gotta be over here, sloping up to that little spot there. So it's got to be right here. So I'm thinking like this spot right here somewhere. While I was certain this was the spot after reviewing the footage, I realized it was most likely much further behind me using a zoom lens. What makes this so hard to line up is not only the position, but a hundred years of the glacier melting and receding and the bends in the river changing. The forest fire smog wasn't helping either. wind is kicking my butt. That's the closest I can do. I don't know. I'm getting rocked up here. The entire day the mountain was getting blasted with unrelenting wind. I feel a little bit defeated with this one. I don't I don't think I've got it. I think I think I'm in the ballpark, but Mountaineer Cowboy might be on the other side of the river on some smaller ledge. I'm not sure. I'm calling out the hiking and mountaineering community. Let's find this exact spot. Where's the Mountaineer Cowboy sitting? It's such a great photo. It's one of my favorites. Uh, I'm calling out Foresty Forest. If anyone can find it, Foresty Forest can. Come on, Simon. I bet you can find it. Perhaps on a uh, less windy day. So after about an hour and a half of being sandblasted by the wind, I'm going to go check out that other peak, the uh, Parker one. to the top of Parker. You can see Mountaineer Cowboy behind me there. This shot here shows how violent the wind is, tossing my tripod up and down with it braced in its most stable and lowest setting. While objective-wise this was a failure, I wasn't able to recreate the Mountaineer Cowboy shot exactly. Doing a project like this, that's not really the point. The point every time is essentially just to get out into the woods and enjoy nature. And perhaps I'll come back if someone else isn't able to recreate this shot. 
and give another go at it, across the highway on the other side of Parker Ridge to where I think the Mountaineer Cowboy was sitting. You might say it's windy up here! <laughs> Cool, the smoke is getting blown away. I actually can see the, the turquoise blue of the lake and I can see a lot more of the valley. What a beautiful place. It's time to head back down. You can see my vehicle down, right down there. It took 24 minutes to descend from the top to the bottom here. Leaving Parker Ridge, just a few minutes drive down into the valley, I head to Athabasca Glacier. Technically, we weren't in Jasper yet. Now we'll be in Jasper. Look at this glacier. Welcome to Athabasca Glacier. <laughs> this is wild. The thing I wanted to do on this road trip is see glaciers. Yeah, th this is doing it, this is doing it. Pulling into Athabasca, my only objective was to get a lay of the land to see if it was possible to hike up directly across from the upper section of the glacier. You see, the lower section of Athabasca Glacier, the part that all the tourists go and see and drive onto the ice with in the rovers, used to connect to the top section of Athabasca. Now the top section is far more impressive than the bottom section. I'd use the remaining hour of light to scope out the area and look for an approach to get up the mountain. So I'm at the toll of the Athabasca parking lot. The sun is setting. These look absolutely amazing. So what we're looking at here, this was all glacier. The glacier used to go all the way back to that green building back there, the uh, main whatever parkway building in 1843. This was all glacier. So you can see these walls that get piled up. The glaciers, when they come down, they push all the stuff to the sides. It, it seems it's this very common. So this is likely all filled in at the top at one point with ice. As you get close to this glacier, you can feel the temperature drop drastically. So the glacier was here in 1992. Watching the sun's golden light cascade across the upper section of the Athabasca Glacier was truly remarkable. So I might come back tomorrow, check this out with the light. But my plan tomorrow, I want to go see the glacier that's up up there. And I want to see if I can just go off trail and find my way up there. On the next episode, I embark on one of the coolest hikes I've ever done, resulting in the most impressive view of a glacier I've ever seen. Be sure to subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.